Hello, welcome to the bee vlog. Today I'm going to be rendering this wax. I've got three buckets full of this old comb. I'll be melting down and turning it into a solid chunk of beeswax. I've shown in a previous video how I melt wax using my solar wax melter. But I've got a lot of old brood comb here and I found that this brood comb doesn't melt in a solar wax melter, or at least my solar wax melter, as well as um, virgin comb does. I think that the black cocoons that are in this wax just act as a heat sink and don't allow the wax to melt very well. Plus we don't get very many sunny days here in Oregon and today is a rainy day. I've got so much of this stuff I gotta get it out of the way and get it melted down. I'm doing it outdoors because when the brood combs melt and those cocoons heat up they stink and the house gets smelly and everyone in it complains. So doing this out in the garage with nice ventilation, um, I have an old stainless steel pot here that I got secondhand. Purchased it for just a few dollars at Goodwill. You can see it's grimy with wax already because I've used it a few times before. I have it filled about half full with water. I also have a spoon for stirring things around and making sure everything gets melted down. Again, bought secondhand for about a dollar at Goodwill. If you can pick up these items at a secondhand store or garage sale is best because once you get wax in them they really never become clean again. A strainer and an apron for protecting your clothes. Now to protect the floor I put down some newspaper. Uh, cardboard is probably really best but I don't have any cardboard so newspaper it is. I'm just gonna let this water come up to a low boil and then start adding the comb to it. When working with wax over a stove, it's also a good idea to have a fire extinguisher handy because wax is flammable. That's why it makes good candles. So if there's an accident, a little spillage, it could go up in flames. So you got to make sure you have a fire extinguisher nearby. As the wax melts, all those little cocoons from the brood comb float up. And yes, this smells about as good as it looks. Once all the wax is fully melted away from the cocoons and the cocoons are no longer stuck together, I'll strain them out and start adding more comb. Try to get as much wax out of the cocoons as possible before throwing them away. Now I'm, I'm not able to fish out all of the sludge because my strainer just can't get all of it. So I'm going to pour this into a bucket with the strainer sitting on top to get the rest of this stuff. This is just the first pass of rendering the wax. It's going to have a little bit of dirt and grime in it after this first pass, but each melting and pass that comes after this will continually refine and filter it down probably take uh, two or three passes at, at um, filtering and refining it. Now that brown goo, that's the wax, and it's floating on top of the water. The water allows the finer particles of dirt to settle and sink out, 
while the wax floats to the top and it will harden. So let this sit until it's hardened. It'll probably have to sit overnight. The wax has melted and it's floating on top of this black water. I'm going to go dump that water out. Just water the plants with it. And then the wax will be ready for another cycle of melting and refining. And you can see that the wax is not perfectly clean. There's some dirt in it. Still, it's got a ways to go before it's clean and ready for use as candles or cosmetics. Now the underside of the wax is really dirty and I've got to clean that off before I melt it down again or it's just going to keep showing up. So I'm just going to scrape it down with my hive tool. Now the, there's little bits of like beads of wax that I don't really care too much about. I can't save it all. And the underside of this is kind of pitted. So really all I'm doing is trying to get the big stuff out of the pits and just dump it in the trash. <coughs> I'm going to try to scrape down as much of the dirt as I can without removing too much of the block of wax. Using a smaller pot now with about an inch to an inch and a half of water in it. Bringing that up to a boil. Now, don't ever walk away from melting wax on a stove. Just asking for trouble. While the wax melts, let's talk about the new ways to follow this video series. First, I recommend clicking the YouTube subscribe button if you already haven't. Second, I set up a Facebook page, and good old Facebook requires a minimum of 25 likes to be able to earn the privilege of getting a custom URL. So if you're a Facebook user, please like my page to help me out. The link will be in the video description. Third, I also set up a Twitter account, so if you use Twitter, then feel free to follow me there. Okay, once I'm satisfied that it's completely melted, I'm just going to turn off the heat and let it sit. I'm not going to strain this one. Just let it harden up and then it will be ready for its final melting. The block has hardened up again. You can still see that there's quite a bit of dirt in it inside the wax that doesn't sink out. Uh, the water is clear though. I can't get the block out without dumping the water out. So I'm going to dump the water and dump the block and see how much dirt is underneath it. So there's the top surface and that's what's on the bottom surface. It's actually not that bad. So that can easily be scraped off or washed off. Then I'm just going to go through one final melting stage. But after I melt it this time, I'm going to pour it through a filter when I dump it into the mold. Before I start melting the wax I want to get my mold and filter set up. For the mold I'm using a milk box. This is the first time I'll be trying this kind of a mold. In the past I've used a loaf pan but I want to make a little more of a more condensed compact block this time. And I'm using these filters. They're used for uh, filtering the oil in fryers. These are pretty affordable filters got a box of 50 of them for about ten dollars on Amazon and they come folded up like this. I'm going to double them up in here simply by turning it inside out. And I'm going to stagger the seams. So the seam is over here on the first filter so I'm going to put the seam of the second filter on the opposite side. in there. <clears throat> I'm going to use these paper clips, or these binder clips, to hold that in place. The last time I used these, they tend to get soft and sag, so I want to make sure that, that won't be falling in. 
Since I don't have any water under the wax in the pot, I think the safest way to do this to avoid overheating the wax and starting a fire or just scorching it is to do it as a double boiler. I have here a shallow frying pan with some water in it. And the sticks give me uh, some clearance so that this pot is not sitting on the bottom of this pan. And they're, instead they're sitting on the sticks. And then as I heat the water, it will melt the wax. All right, it's beginning to melt now. Okay, it's fully melted now, so I'll turn off the heat. See if I can pour this into the mold without making too much of a mess. It's working nicely. And once the wax cools around here, I will take everything apart. And I'm going to cut out that section because I'm going to use the filter paper with the wax on it as fire starter, um, particularly for my uh, smoker. And there's the liquid wax down in the mold. Just need to let that harden up. And I can take it out of the mold and it's all done. block of wax has solidified. I'm going to cut open the cardboard and see how it looks. There it is. All done. You know at the end of the Lord of the Rings the Return of the King, when Gollum falls into Mount Doom and the ring sits on top of some solid rock before falling into the lava. And people give it a hard time for you can't have something solid sitting on top of something molten if they're made of the same material. I'm just saying. <laughs>